Sunday, the 29th of April, 1945, one week before the end of World War II in Europe. The US 7th Army's 45th Infantry Division liberates Dachau, the first regular concentration camp built by the Nazi government. The soldiers smell not only human excrement, but also decaying bodies, causing many of them to cry or vomit, as they find piles of impossibly malnourished corpses, more than 30 railroad cars filled with thousands of dead bodies and 30,000 survivors, most of them severely emaciated, who look like walking skeletons. Thousands of them are sick and will die from typhus epidemics and starvation during the months following the camp's liberation. One of the main perpetrators of these atrocities is Wilhelm Rupert. Friedrich Wilhelm Rupert was born on the 2nd of February 1905 in Frankenthal, then part of the German Empire. He was married, had one child, and was an electrical engineer by profession. On the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler, the leader of the Nazi party, was appointed Chancellor of Germany by the German president, Paul von Hindenburg. It was Germany's economic collapse during the Great Depression, beginning in 1929, that most contributed to the Nazi party's success. The crisis resulted in widespread unemployment and poverty, and also led to an increase in crime. The resulting anger and fear left the Germans vulnerable to arguments from both the extreme right and left. One such German was Wilhelm Rupert, who joined both the Nazi party and the SS in 1933. Immediately after Hitler came to power, Germany became a dictatorship, and the Nazi regime quickly began to restrict the civil and human rights of the Jews and established the first concentration camps, imprisoning its political opponents, homosexuals, Jehovah's Witnesses, and others classified as dangerous. Unlike regular prisons, with which they are often inaccurately compared today, concentration camps were independent of any judicial review. The first such camp, Dachau, was established in March 1933, less than two months after Hitler became the Chancellor. Starting on the 11th of April, 1933, Rupert was one of the first guards at the Dachau concentration camp, where initially he worked as a camp electrician. During the first year, the camp had a capacity of 5,000 prisoners. Initially, the internees were primarily German communists, social democrats, trade unionists, and other political opponents of the Nazi regime. However, over time, other groups were also interned at Dachau, such as Jehovah's Witnesses, Roma and Sinti people, homosexuals, repeat criminal offenders, as well as so-called asocials, whom the regime incarcerated because they could not or would not find gainful employment. During the early years, relatively few Jews were interned in Dachau, and then only usually because they belonged to one of the above groups or had completed prison sentences after being convicted for violating the 1935 Nuremberg Laws, which put Nazi ideas about race into law. In early 1937, VSS, using prisoner labor, began construction of a large complex of buildings on the grounds of the original camp. Prisoners were forced to do this work, starting with the destruction of the old munitions factory under terrible conditions. The construction was officially completed in mid-August 1938. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939 when Germany invaded Poland, and on the 18th of September 1942, Rupert was transferred to the Majdany concentration camp in Lublin, where he was the technical director of the camp administration. During the entire period of his existence, the Majdanek camp was under construction. It also contained storage facilities for clothing and personal items stolen from the Jews before their deaths in the Belzhets, Sobibor, and Treblinka II killing centers. In these storage facilities, Majdanek female prisoners sorted and repaired clothes. In the winter of 1941 to 1942, camp authorities began to use Zyklon B gas to murder prisoners too weak to work in a makeshift gas chamber. Mass murder operations using poison gas began at Majdanek in October 1942 and continued until the end of 1943. There appear to have been three gas chambers at Majdanek. At least two were shower rooms reconfigured for the use of Zyklon B gas. At least one of these was used to kill human beings. The SS killed tens of thousands of Jews at Majdanek. Most of them arrived in the camp as forced laborers and either died as a result of the brutally inhumane living conditions or were killed in the gas chambers after the Germans determined that they could no longer work. In November 1943, Rupert was a witness to Operation Harvest Festival at Majdanek, which was the code name for the German action which aimed to murder all remaining Jews in the Lublin district of German-occupied Poland. 
Nazi officials initiated Operation Harvest Festival in response to several insurgencies conducted by surviving Jews in the German-occupied East. In the spring and summer of 1943, German occupiers encountered armed resistance in the ghettos of Warsaw and Białystok. On the 2nd of August 1943, Jewish prisoners rebelled at the Dreblinka Killing Center, while an insurgency at the Sobibor Killing Center on the 14th of October 1943 facilitated the escape of over 300 prisoners, 58 of these surviving the war. The Operation Reinhardt Killing Centers were liquidated in the autumn of 1943 in the wake of prisoner uprisings at Sobibor and Treblinka. Fearing further insurrections in the general government, which was the administrative division of Nazi-occupied Poland, SS Chief Heinrich Himmler ordered the murder of the remaining 45,000 Jewish prisoners engaged in forced labor in the Lublin district. Most of these were deployed as forced laborers at the Travniki, Poniatowa, and Majdanek camps. Harvest Festival began at dawn on the 3rd of November, 1943. SS and police units surrounded the Travniki and Poniatowa labor camps, and Jews were then removed from the camps in groups and shot in nearby pits dug for this purpose. At Majdanek, Nazi officials first separated Jews from the other prisoners. They were then marched to nearby trenches and shot. Jews from other labor camps in the Lublin area were also transferred to Majdanek for shooting. Music played through loudspeakers at both Majdanek and Travniki camps to drown out the noise of the mass shootings and to mask the screams of the victims. At Majdanek and Travniki, the killing operation was completed in a single day. At Poniatowa, the shootings concluded on the 4th of November, lasting two days. Approximately 42,000 Jews were killed during Harvest Festival, the largest German perpetrated massacre of the Holocaust. In May 1944, Rupert was a warehouse manager in the Warsaw concentration camp until its evacuation in August of the same year. The camp was located in the ruins of the Warsaw Ghetto, and although it first functioned as a camp in its own right, it was later demoted to a branch of the Majdanek concentration camp in May 1944. On the 6th of August of the same year, Wilhelm Rupert returned to the Dachau concentration camp and served there under the camp commandant, Eduard Weiter. Rupert was responsible for the operation of the camp. On the 23rd of April 1945, he was replaced by Max Schobert. On the 13th of September 1944, Rupert killed a British resistance agent in France named Noor Inayat Khan, who was labeled by the Nazis as highly dangerous. In 1943, Noor was sent to Nazi-occupied Paris under the codename Madeleine to work as a wireless operator for the French resistance. She was the first female radio operator sent to occupied France by the SOE, the British Special Operations Executive. Despite the constant danger of discovery by the Gestapo, Noor transmitted crucial information to London, aiding the Allied forces. Unfortunately, in October 1943, she was betrayed, captured by the Gestapo, imprisoned, and eventually sent to Dachau. Despite severe torture and interrogation, she did not reveal any information that could compromise her network. The night before the execution, Khan was kicked and beaten, and when her frail body had slumped on the floor, Rupert asked her to kneel and then shot her point blank in the back of the head. During the second half of April 1945, only a few days prior to the surrender of Nazi Germany, Rupert accompanied the death march of the prisoners from Dachau to the High Alps of Tyrol. On the 27th of April, 1945, approximately 7,000 prisoners, mostly Jews, were forced to begin a death march from Dachau to Tegensee, far to the south. During the six-day death march, anyone who could not keep up or continue was shot. Many others died of exposure, hunger, or exhaustion. American forces liberated the Dachau concentration camp on the 29th of April, 1945. And in early May of the same year, American troops liberated the surviving prisoners from the death march to Tegensee. It was in Tegensee where Rupert was arrested and then kept for several months in American custody. After World War II, which ended in Europe on the 8th of May, 1945, Wilhelm Rupert was tried at the Dachau camp trial which was the first mass trial of the Dachau Trials held by the United States Army on the premises of the Dachau concentration camp. The main trial took place from the 15th of November to the 13th of December, 1945. Forty people were charged with war crimes in connection with the Dachau concentration camp and its subcamps. The trial ended with 40 convictions, including 36 death sentences, of which 28 were carried out. 
Apart from the execution of the British spy, Noor Inayat Khan, multiple witnesses before the court said Rupert selected prisoners for execution. Moreover, Rupert was called a man who had no empathy for his victims, whom he frequently whipped. Further evidence showed that he had presided over the executions of at least 90 Russian prisoners. He led the Russians from their compound and rushed them down to the crematorium, and when they were shot in the neck, their gold teeth had been taken. In August 1944, a transport of Jews arrived from Warsaw, and according to some witnesses, Rupert ordered that the bodies in the carts be taken to the crematorium. Some of these prisoners were still alive, but they were taken to the crematorium anyway. Though Rupert denied most of the accusations, his lies did not help him escape justice. On the 13th of December, 1945, the US military tribunal found Wilhelm Rupert guilty of the mistreatment of prisoners and participating in executions and sentenced him to death by hanging. Rupert was 41 years old when he was executed on the 28th of May, 1946. There were no tears shed for Wilhelm Rupert. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.